Hey folks, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Hitachi style air compressor from the Discovery 3. That's this one here on the right. I've just taken it out of my vehicle as it was starting to cause issues. And this one here on the left is the Dunlop version of the Hitachi, which I'm going to be putting in. The main issue I was having with this compressor was whenever the vehicle was lowering, that it simply would stop lowering and it would give a fault. The code was something to do with the exhaust outlet, so I had full intentions of rebuilding this one. But when I took it apart, firstly the collets on both pipes were completely seized and disintegrated once I tried to remove the air lines. And also I can see that on the exhaust valve, the pipe going to it has broken off the valve and is looks to be kind of kicked solid with some sort of aluminium corrosion. So for that reason I chose to go with a new compressor, but we're going to tear this one apart just to see what sort of condition it's in. There are three 4mm allen bolts that hold the compressor onto the mounting bracket. I managed to get two of these off and the third one snapped. So I'm going to have a bit of work to do to reuse the bracket for the new one. And then we can pop off the plastic clip that holds the wiring in place. And then we can separate the bracket from the compressor. I'm going to take off the back cover of the dryer housing. This is something I've replaced a couple of years ago with a, I think it's an aluminium one. The plastic one that comes on it from factory, or that used to come out, used to split between the inlet and outlet and cause an air leak. These are six T30 bolts. Inside we have a spring, and we have our first filter pad behind which is our desiccant. Sorry, filter pad, and now our desiccant feeds. I'm going to tip these out and see do we have a congealed mess at the bottom. Most of that tipped out fairly easily. But then at the bottom we have more caked stuff. So it would have been tough for the air to pass through this. There should be a, another filter pad at the very bottom. If we can pry it off. It's coming. And then we can see our passageway through to the motor. There's a common fault that happens with these air compressors when the desiccant becomes clogged like that and you'll get a code that from memory reads something like air reservoir filling too slowly. So that's often a easy enough thing to do to replace the filter pads and the desiccant dryer material. The housing of the air dryer is held on by a one Phillips screw and then you can rotate the whole housing and pull it off. So we're going to try and remove the screw which looks rather rusty in this case. And let's just strip the head off that. So I'm going to drill out that screw. Got the screw drilled out. Hopefully now we can Twist it and hopefully pull it off the motor. It's coming now, and that's it off.
Next we're going to take off some of these covers and have a look in at the valves. I'll take off the cover here and we should be able to see I suppose the end of the motor. I'd imagine there's going to be a piston inside this little cylinder with a con rod down onto some sort of a lobe on the motor. Got the three bolts off the motor cover here removed. Two of them sheared off. One came out properly. Inside it looks like it has managed to stay out of the elements. Doesn't sound too healthy. It was running quite noisily this pump. Quite a bit of play there in something, I'm not sure if it's the rod bearing or the motor. I think it's in the motor. Let's take the cylinder off. I've tried one nut already, or one bolt, and the head has come straight off. The second one has sheared just above the treads. Third one, the head is sheared off. And the fourth one, the head is sheared off. So I had to get a bit brutal with the ankle grinder and cut the four bolts as they were seized inside the aluminium housing of the head. So now that those are loose, we can remove the head. The air pipe. Here we can see the valve in the top of the cylinder head. And we can remove the cylinder. Which looks in reasonable shape. There are plenty of marks in it, but it seems fairly smooth. I don't know what the tolerance is like in these. And there we can see the piston itself. Looks to be made of a sort of a, a plastic material, centre being aluminium. The conrod bearing feels good down in the big end. So that roughness we felt must have been in the motor. Yeah, we can feel and hear the bearings in the motor there. I'm going to pop this conrod out. It's a T25. If we turn the motor around motor is very stiff. We should be able to get the piston out. Or maybe not. There we go. So that's our little little rod. I'm going to give the motor a spin just by hooking up the red and black wires to a little battery, a little 12 volt battery. I'm going to see what it sounds like. I have a feeling it's going to sound pretty bad when it's in the vice like this, no sandproofing around it. Now I'm going to keep disassembling and see what what we can see. More broken bolts. Another one. Another one. Four out of four. So inside that we have I'm not exactly sure what. Was there something else in that to flew out? Next I'm going to remove the the air valve, the solenoid valve. Once again I had to cut the heads off both bolts both screws on that because they weren't going to come off. You can see here we have inside there we have a plunger that moves up and down and lets air from this gallery to the inside one. We have a little filter in the inside. That all looks okay. Looks relatively clean. I'm going to remove what I think is the exhaust valve. I think there's a little rubber valve and a spring in behind here. I know you can buy this part 
for servicing these. And the small impact doesn't seem to be able to handle that. So we're going to have to go for the big machine. And that has sheared completely. Wow. So we're not going to be able to go any further there, I'm afraid. Here's the top of that. So here's everything I've removed laid out on the table here. I could take things a bit further and split the motor if I wanted to take a look inside, but I'm happy enough not to. These air compressors are fairly good in general. They were replaced by the AMK, by two types of AMK over the years. The newer type being, being fairly good, but you have to update the software on the ECU to tell it to use the new pump type. Whereas with the older ones you can just replace them without any software upgrades. They are fairly serviceable units if you can get them apart. But as you've seen, most of the fasteners on this one have just sheared off. So if your pump looks clean, there isn't any rust on it, you might be able to take it apart. Certainly the air dryer is something you can do. I would recommend doing it if it's causing any issues. Okay, thanks for that. See you next time.